And when I woke up in the morning, I found you left me for a poster. Oh, hi everybody! It's your old pal Ribsy back again, just making another poster. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm whispering, but that's because I've got something very precious, something very delicate down here, and I don't want to disturb it. Hold on two seconds. Here it is. What I've got in this box is my precious format. You know, the sort of thing that makes this channel work. You know, you do four posters, you pick one you love, you pick one you hate, and two that could be absolutely anything, and you talk about those posters for a bit. Should take about an hour or something. But then, someone comes along and drives a horse and bloody cart through it by rambling on for bloody hours about the same poster, getting a bit drunk, and generally not respecting. And who is this miscreant? It's Drew Bloody Millward. And because of his crimes, I am going to have to split this episode into maybe two, maybe three different parts. Thanks a bunch, Drew. Anyway, this is the first part. I'll probably get the next part up sometime next week. But in the meantime, here's the annoying theme tune. Hi everybody and welcome back to Four Poster Neds where I am today with Drew Millward, poster artist of note, of note. It, of of note of note. I yeah, think, I think of note. Kind of, yeah, I'm. Yes, thank you. I can promote you. We can go further if you want, but I, I think you can if you like. But I wouldn't a, acclaimed. Uh, anything better than that? Uh, I'm not willing to go above acclaimed. Acclaimed's fine. Okay, acclaimed yeah. poster artist Drew Millward. And where are we, Drew? Where are we today? Uh, we, we're out and about, aren't we? We are out and about. We're out and about. It's we, very exciting. Uh, we are in the uh, UNESCO World Heritage <laughs> Site of Saltaire. I was not going to say me for a second. Oh, I, the, I, I am a... the UNESCO Heritage Site of Jack Hurley. <laughs> Bad um, time. Yeah, we're, we're in Saltaire at, um, at Cultures. At Cultures? Which yeah. It's very nice, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Look at these old things, eh? Yeah, I know. I know. It's... Uh, yeah, I brought you here under the uh, un- under the guise of this being very much a work a work <laughs> thing, but yeah, it's uh, it's all promotion. It's all promotion. Promotion for for cultures. Uh, if you like wine, if you like cheese, if you like beer, then come to place cultures. the be. Come to cultures. We got it all. Sardines. <laughs> <laughs> I would like some sardines now, please, Drew. <laughs> I can do your chocolate or actual sardines. You do chocolate sardines? Yes, chocolate sardines. Wow. We've got everything here. Wow. It's wonderful. This is cultured. It really is, isn't it? <laughs> Very much is. But, yeah. We've got Kim cheese. We've got ferments. Kim cheese. Kim chi- Kim's cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just, she's a lovely woman. I don't want to know about Kim's cheese. Anyway, mm. why have I brought you here today? Why are you poster adjacent? Um, I, I wouldn't even say I'm poster adjacent. I am. You are a poster. I am poster. <laughs> right. I, I think that's fair enough. I think um, you, are, you are big poster. I think, po- yeah, poster adjacent is not, yeah, it's not even applicable at this point, is it? I, no. I, yeah, I think, um, so pretty much for the past almost 20 years, I've been making posters you've been living, I, living the poster dream yeah I, I mean i i started out making posters um and i still make posters on a regular basis it's it's is pretty much the uh consistent part of my entire work life my my art practice if you will <laughs> It's very impressive because it's yeah. difficult. It's difficult to make. It's very difficult to yeah. make a full time thing of posters, but yeah, you, you have made it with a plum. Yeah, yeah. It's still pretty much. Um, I suppose it's kind of what. Uh, it's certainly what I started doing, and it's just one of those things that's always been part of um, 
my yeah of what I do. I mean, I I still absolutely love making posters. I I, I it's the idea. I mean, making making artwork and drawing pictures is uh, is what I love doing, but. The, the fact that there's kind of like the the application of it at the end where it serves a purpose it's kind of means that I have to do things you do because otherwise do otherwise things. I might not <laughs> <laughs> and that's it that's what it's about because posters have jobs they do they, they have do. jobs yeah yeah um which gives me a job yeah which is nice um because I yeah I I I think I've always been um yeah, I've, I, I, yeah, I like, I like the applied arts. I like things to have a reason. Um, Could, if if I gave you a blank canvas and was just like express yourself, true. Yeah, would that be quite problematic? Would that not for me? Because I'd just go to the pub, so it'd be fine. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, we, I, I'd find lots of things to do in that time. Uh, but uh, yeah, the the. Um, the application side of things and the reasoning behind making work and um yeah along the way you're hopefully making the world a slightly nicer place to be um yeah and it was kind of i mean i fell into it i guess i felt i we we were putting on gigs and we needed posters to advertise those gigs so i started making posters it's a story I've told a hundred times before, but yeah, it's I, I started. We we were putting on on shows and booking bands and running record labels, so we needed to advertise those sorts of things. Um, and I kind of fell into it that way, and then at some point, someone paid me about thirty pounds to make a poster, and I quit a fairly secure, well-paid job <laughs> to do that. And that and the rest, as they say. Is history. It's histoire. Yeah. Amazing. What do you think you'd be doing if you weren't making posters? Uh, army. I reckon your army, definitely. No navy. Uh, navy would be all right. I always got, I got told um, by a careers advisor that perhaps archaeology would oh, be really? the way to go, which I can kind of understand, but I have none of... I mean, aside from being able to dig in dirt, I, I'm not really... <laughs> Scrabble with uh, your yeah, I'm not, I've got, I've got fuck all else. <laughs> the, the, this, the science and history aspects of that fall somewhat by the wayside. I, re- I remember I had to do that, that thing where you, you kind of answered the questionnaire and it gave you the career at the end. Yeah. And my number one was journalism, oh. which was, was quite fancy. Well, that's what you're doing now. The second one was um, Shepherd. I mean, they are polled. <laughs> they are ready. You've got you to got, question the process. I, I, yeah, I think you need to question the questionnaire at that point. Because that's... I am a, uh, I'm yeah, a sheep they, journalist. You could have got a job at the Dalesman. I could have done. I could have done. What See, could have been? What, what could have been more perfect? <laughs> but here we are, and we're here today to talk about posters. And Drew's picked four. So our first one is, what is our first poster? Uh, we're going. I kind of threw your uh, guideline slightly out the window. Didn't <laughs> Everyone I? does. It's, it's become a thing now. You wanted a love, love, hate, and two indifference. Yes. Um, and I suppose, to a degree, this is it is a love one, um, and it's certainly the poster that perhaps had the most effect on me. <laughs> Um, good effect, a bad effect, because this, this could go a lot of ways, this poster. It really did. I mean, look, it's fucking terrifying. It is. It's absolutely, to the point where, I mean, yeah, going back into the dim and distant, I think this film came out in 1985, so I would have been four. Um, and obviously I, I didn't see it at the cinema, I didn't, uh, but... A uh, couple of years after that, it was when I would have started being aware of being in a video shop yeah. and renting films, and it's it's a, it, it's seared <laughs> into, <laughs> into my into my mind. Um, I did I, I find out who the artist was and everything, but I've forgotten that now. We'll have to Google it. Don't worry, we'll, we, I'll we can, just I'll do that. 
and you can we will retrospectively yeah we can put that in um, <laughs> um, yeah so it's a poster for the film Fright Night which it, having now seen the film now, now that I'm 42 I, 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 I plucked up the courage to to, to watch it um, and it is kind, it's a bit of a silly kind of uh, comedy horror it is not as terrifying as the poster the poster is going all out on terrifying it is absolutely petrifying to the point that when i was young these sort of the i can't remember what the what the what the cloud formation is the sort of the very wispy clouds oh yeah yeah um that are that are on the poster just them <laughs> just that cloud formation and a moon was enough to go oh are we going to be attacked by vampires we don't know and you, and you haven't seen the film at this point oh no no, no I mean I would say I, I, it's probably within the last 10 15 years that yeah. I've seen the film yeah it's not um, maybe it's maybe it's a bit longer than that I, I, I did watch it at, at some point and it is it's great it's 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 a funny romp. Right. I mean, I, I love. I, I mean, now I absolutely love horror films. So it's kind of um, yeah, and I, I, I do think it's a great film. And the remake isn't that bad either, okay. so, which is rare. Um, but yes, I'm mean, seeing it on the wall in the video shop. Um, pretty much just stopped me in my tracks and just scared the shit out of me. So can you tell the boys and girls what's actually going on in this poster? What, what, what's happening here? Well, we've got, we, we've got the house. We've got this small... Well, it's quite a large, isn't it? It's a, it's a sub, it, what looks to be a suburban house. A classic American suburban house. It is, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, around that time, you're obviously... It's kind of... It, yeah. Looking at it now, you can kind of see where where that sort of thing was coming from you it's it's not a million miles away from the streets on nightmare on elm street halloween yeah. yeah that sort of thing um so it was very much obviously a trope at the time of setting these films in these kind of american suburban areas and as someone who grew up in the suburbs there's probably something there that kind of it's not a gothic castle it's not it's not the same um, yeah, it's not this sort of fantastical kind of thing that is completely alien from what you know. It is. It's a street. It's a street with a pavement. So you know we're talking modern times here. This is kind of, and that then married with this fucking terrifying <laughs> cloud formation above. Um, kind of yeah. It, it, and it's not something I'd ever thought about until you asked me about these posters, and then yeah, yeah. suddenly I realised that there's so much of of that in a lot of the sort of like work that I do. So, like for the last few years, I've done posters for several sort of John Carpenter films, and they all kind of subconsciously, I must have gone, just, I, I just fucking do that. Just revert back to Fright Night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll try and do the Fright Night poster. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 an incredible piece of art, full stop. But then, when you're confronted by that as a child in a video shop, it's kind of yeah, just absolutely petrifying. And one of the things I've really noticed about this is, is we think it's a suburban setting. Mm. This house is on its own. This house is absolutely on its own. There are no neighbours anywhere. So which, it, it could be, yeah. it could be the middle of nowhere, it which doesn't make be... sense in context with the film because it is about a suburban neighbourhood right. where a vampire <laughs> moves in next door to someone. Of so it's kind of it, it's it is all. I mean, the film itself is great. It's it's a kid who suspects his neighbour of being a vampire, and mm. everyone says no, 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 don't no, be no, so no, stupid. No. Turns out he was right all along, um, and it, yeah. I suppose that kind of yeah, like you say, the the house by itself, it makes a lot of sense in terms of um, how you would put a poster together. Yeah, but not in terms of the film. And I, I in a way, it kind of. Um, well, obviously, we'll get to the my bugbear later on, but it, it kind of almost. Um, 
it kind of it, it marries up a little bit with that in as much as it's kind of like they've obviously given wh- whether the artist ever even saw the film <laughs> or was just told do this it's about yeah. this yeah I mean this kind of, there are, I mean the 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 face above the house is kind of it is a likeness I would say of, of what happens in the film but that's much more terrifying a rough it's much more terrifying than what actually happens. So whether he'd seen some rough kind of daily cuts of the yeah. film or something, or this is the makeup that we're going to be using, um, yet somehow managed to make something that is arguably far more terrifying than the actual film itself. Big fairground airbrush vibes on, yeah. on that face. Ab- absolutely. Yeah. 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 Very... Which is. I, I yeah I'm I'm all about that kind of thing. So. I, I I love the fairground airbrush yeah. particularly when you, you you're really shoehorning like very disparate celebrities in there. When you got like yes. Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger next to Britney Spears. Yeah, um, yeah. We we had one that stopped near our village not that long last year. They had they definitely had Arnold Schwarzenegger. They had uh, Christina Aguilera. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm saying Christina Aguilera, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. It's difficult to tell, isn't it? It can be. Cher was on there. Right. As well. And it's just kind of... It's, it's, it, have, you ever, have you even looked at these people? Do you know what their faces look like? I would say that's kind of a prerequisite of making a portrait. You should... At least may, have maybe idea. have a passing familiarity yeah. with, with the person. You're... It's a little bit like the old... Um, Sort of like the the old explorers, who yeah. basically went off on a jolly for three years and then came back going like, "I've heard about these fucking wild animals." <laughs> yeah, what is it? <laughs> it's called a lion. <laughs> Huge teeth, <laughs> yeah, big hair, but massive oh, hair. We're just a crazy, and you know that they've just spent sort of like the last few years living in Portsmouth, drinking themselves into a stupor, <laughs> but. It, and they've come back and gone, I've drawn it, I've drawn it. Do you want to have a look at what I've drawn? <laughs> sort of gummy. Yeah. Sort of, it, it, well, it, it, it happened with some, like, the early taxidermy as well. You've got these these lions and they're going like, well, what have they got? They've got big teeth. It's like, just like big, and they've just put big human teeth in there. It's like that um, saber-toothed tiger in Leeds Museum down at the bottom. I would argue all of the taxidermy <laughs> in Leeds Museum. Is leaves somewhat to be desired. I'm going to have to go to Leeds Museum now and take a photo of the same two tiger because it is worthy of inclusion, isn't it? It's, it... I would say there's quite, there, there are quite a few down there. We went, yeah, not that long ago, the other week, and it was... Yeah, you, you, yeah. When, you, when you've got a panda smiling at you, <laughs> you, know, you know something's gone awry. So the, the rough approximation school of taxidermy. <laughs> it's like, it's like I can really get know, behind. It's kind of... You get the idea. You know what a bear's like. No, I've literally never seen a bear. The only thing I've got to go on is this drawing that you've given me. (laughs) This photocopy. Yeah, and I don't know what it is. (laughs) But you're right about posters that you see in childhood that can sort of sear their way into your brain. Yeah. The the Robocop poster. I I remember a trip to London and sitting on the underground and it being sort of on that little strip at the top, yeah. just being fascinated, endlessly yeah. fascinated by yeah. Robocop. Like. Because it's telling you enough about something, but it is not, it's not telling you everything. It's telling you, look at this cool ro- yeah. robot. This poli- robot policeman. This robot policeman who, how's he ended up like that? We don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, just that, that sort of like the, the hints as to... And it, it, it happens a lot more in film posters from, I, I would say, sort of like the sort of like eighties backwards, where there's a lot of posters that don't really pertain to the film in any way whatsoever. <laughs> there's always that there's that famous sort of like Ed Wood quote about of like, well, if you got the, the film's not made, but we yeah we've got a poster. <laughs> And it's like, okay, so you've got a title and a poster, that's all you need. It's like, we can worry about the film later, but as long as we can get people buying tickets to it, and 
I, I, I kind of like that. There's a lot of sort of stuff in sort of like the, like a lot of sort of the Eastern European sort of poster scene where the artist would then have to interpret a film that they've not seen and it would be, they'd create these posters that were absolutely incredible. There's some great ones for like Ghostbusters and Short Circuit and things. Clearly never seen the film. Just but they're just incredible away. posters. Brilliant. Um, and it's, it's kind of like, you, you almost want that, Maybe maybe it's the fact that we're living in an age now where you, it is everything's so readily available and film posters are so fucking literal. Yeah, that it, it is almost kind of like you're kicking against that idea of like, well, I don't, I yeah, I yes, I know what Liam Neeson looks like. <laughs> so I don't. What's that going to tell me? So I don't need to know that. But it'd be quite nice to see someone's interpretation of of. Of that film, and it's kind of, I think sort of like the, certainly the last sort of decade or so of um, like Mondo and stuff, yeah. and that's sort of like that resurgence in sort of actual art um, in film posters has been it, it, it is really refreshing. It just hasn't perhaps permeated all parts of the film industry, <laughs> um, so you are still kind of plagued with the same sort of tropes over and over again. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I, th- I think this is part, this is this is the one that stuck with me, but then you look back at around a similar sort of time and those posters that you would have seen in in the video shop at that time, you were kind of spoiled with just posters, like, the, the, like Drew Struzan's posters of sort of like for the Goonies and all the sort of yeah, Spielberg yeah, films and things. Yeah. They're just, they're, they're, Amazing painted pieces of artwork. Yeah, and everyone stacked up the sides, yeah. all going around yeah. the edges, like really yeah. intricate yeah. bits of work. And there's a reason. It kind of tells a story. It's not just. It's not just a bunch of floating heads. Yeah. kicking around who are vying for top billing on a film. It's kind of like you. You kind of. It's an encapsulation of the film in a poster. Um, without giving anything else away. It's just kind of like, it's incredible. Um, and I don't know, this kind of, it is a, it's a small window of time, I guess, that people of our age, elderly people now, <laughs> who <laughs> grew up going to the video shop and seeing those posters on the wall. And that was kind of what got you. I remember going to like the cinema and seeing the posters of films coming soon and things like that. It's like, Wow, that looks incredible. Invariably, it was shit. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. The posters sold it to you. And there was always one really big clue on all these posters, which was the age Ooh. rating. Because like, if it had an 18, yeah. it was like, yeah, this is, this is going to be off the yeah. hook. This yeah. is going to exactly. be absolutely off the hook. And I imagine yeah. Friday night, probably had, it, it would definitely have had a 15. Uh, Maybe even an eighty. We've got a we've got a, a restricted one on this one. That's definitely was, getting an eighty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and obviously around that time, you t- it's it's the height of the video nasty the video era nasty. as well. So you've kind of not only have you got that poster on the wall, you've got the top shelves with all the video boxes on. I remember yeah, so, yeah. An, another one that really sticks with me. It wasn't a poster; it was the video box for the film Dolls, which was just fucking terrifying <laughs> and there's so many like that and now obviously I've seen that film it's like it's not terrifying but it's like they went all out yeah and just went right well fuck it the film isn't that scary but we need we're to gonna, we're gonna terrify children yeah we need to we need to really wide. scar an entire generation <laughs> but yeah it's, it's yeah it's it's kind of yeah, it, I think it's perhaps just sort of like those that formative experience of seeing of seeing poses, and it's not something that I'd ever really thought about a great deal. No, um, no, it's a, it's a sort of thing that imprints on you. And yeah, you, you, you just it's by it's via osmosis. It yeah. just it, it's there. It's yeah. just kind of like that is your your cultural landscape that you live in, um, and I think it's only sort of like when it's taken away from you that you suddenly realise oh, there's something. Something's not quite right. Something's missing, and I think the sort of like the one in terms of film posters after after that one 
that I remember seeing and being excited about was like Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, yeah. Where it was like... I had the poster on my wall. What the fuck is this? Yeah. It looks like a punk flyer. Yeah. It looks this kind of cut up, homemade kind of... It's like, oh man, that looks pretty good. And I, I suppose around that time I was really into film as well. So I'd heard about Reservoir Dogs and I think my I think my auntie and uncle had been to see it and they were like, no, you should never see that film, it's awful. And that was the thing because there was so much mystique around the Yeah, film exactly. Well, you could, there? There yeah. Was... I remember getting it on, someone at school managed to get a pirate copy yeah. of it. I watched it on pirate video. Um... I loved it because it's a great film. <laughs> it's like that wasn't a disappointment. It was like, oh no, this is actually great. This is yeah. this is like watching the films that I'd already seen around that sort of age, sort of like early teens, I guess. It's like it's it's Scorsese on a shoestring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like it's this condensed kind of ball of like that's oh, great. Yeah, it must have been a lovely gig as well, like doing the Reservoir Dogs poster. Yes, yeah. I mean all the signifiers are there. You've got your, yeah. your monochrome suits. You've got you've got those stills from yeah. the film, but they're all like yeah. walking towards the camera. Yeah, exactly. All of that. It's all yeah. there. It's all like ready yeah. to go. You've just got to smush it into a yeah. poster. And I don't think it's. I I, I perhaps don't think it's. Um, it, it, it's not it's not complete serendipity that obviously Tarantino was a huge film fan yeah he, he, he arguably he's quite a lot older than us but sort of like was so embedded in that idea of a film and the peripheries of film and posters and things it's like and, and, and so certainly with like Pulp Fiction it's like even when I got to university how many people still had Pulp Fiction posters up in the they still got about now actually I have yeah I've seen a, I've, I've Oh, yeah, I spied a few in Headingley not yeah. that long ago. Yeah, no, no, when I go for a walk <laughs> on an evening and you go past student houses, you see train spotting posters, you see Pulp Fiction posters. It's like, yeah. how long have I been asleep? <laughs> what, what, what year is this? That's, it's kind of sad, though, isn't it? In a way. Yeah. It's like, what I. It... There was always someone at a uni with a bullet poster when I was yeah. there, or a yeah, great yeah. escape poster, yeah. or something like that. You know, it's, it's like the kid in your class who's like really into Dark Side of the Moon that may or may not have been me. <laughs> Don't judge me, Drew. Well, you can, you can see you judging you me. You can usually tell them by smelling them. <laughs> <laughs> Just squ- squidgy black, yeah. Yeah, squidgy black. <laughs> squidgy black. <laughs> there, there's always, yeah, there's always that, that throwback thing. And like the 90s today are our 60s, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think there's obviously kind of, I mean, worryingly so. I would say there's kind of a um, a resurgence in baggy jeans, <laughs> yeah. um, baggy jeans and vest tops. Some girls, I think, seems to be a real kind of thing that I'm terrified of at the moment. It's like, I, you've not learned any of our lessons. Let's not bring that back. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. You do not want a wet hem of a jean. No, you don't. Hanging around in the puddles. No, no, you don't. Is it? Is it? creeps its way up the back oh. of your leg and you get that yeah. little rip just above the hem as well and it becomes like a stirrup it, it does <laughs> stuck under your DC trainer <laughs> yeah. you've got that smell of foist about you all yeah the time, well that's it's, yeah it, everything yeah everything comes around everything's in cycles time is a flat circle it is a flat et circle etc but yeah I think it's um, it it I mean, we'll get on to the, my my bugbear later on. But we will yeah, do. I think it's kind of yeah. I think it is perhaps, and it's not even a matter of sort of like harking back to these good old days. I don't think they were, but I do think there's a lot of things that have been lost um, in with with the ease of technology has come unintended consequences. And the unintended consequences have been perhaps tenfold in terms of design and art that have not, it, it's not weathered that storm particularly well. Yeah. I mean, the thing that gets me, and uh, we're both in danger of being old man shouting at clowns.jpg here, um, but you well, know, just, <laughs> yeah. let's run with it. I, why would anyone be watching this? He wasn't into that. True enough, true enough. I mean, I think the music thing really gets me where it is 
kind of amazing that you have every song in the world in your pocket. Like yeah. That. Like, yeah. Gro- growing up in a small town where you were at the mercy of HMV imports for 17 quid and a three months wait like, yeah. having that is amazing but the downside of that is that it's no longer as tribal as it was and it's not as tribal but you've also got the um, things don't work in the same way you've not got it's not a um, there's not a local kind of uh, cultural gatekeeper yeah should we say sort yeah. of like like people that I knew as a kid who were into sort of skating and things and then you found out that they were into sort of some bands that they were into and it's like and then you read the thank you notes in the back of the album <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and you'd get yourself your punkarama sort of like compilations with your mail order catalogue yeah folded up in there. exactly yeah. and that would be sort of like a gateway into something else and things don't work the same way now in terms of these the algorithms feed you things and it's like the algorithms are, I would say, nine times out of ten, completely out of whack with what they should be telling you. Um, you don't get that sort of organic kind of blooming of information from perhaps the right places. It's like when you just when you look at sort of any kind of um, like Spotify, if you put on a playlist on Spotify, and it's like, well, what, what are you into? It's like, well, I'm into sort of, I'm into punk rock. And it's like, oh, I got you sorted. Don't you worry, I got you, <laughs> I got you I, covered. I got you some punk rock. Yeah, yeah. And then you listen to what they're offering, it's like, That's, this is dog shit. And it, it, it doesn't fulfil the brief that I've given you. This is wonderful. Um, whereas... Th- I'm not saying I'm not saying it was an infallible way of discovering music beforehand, but you made your own mistakes. Oh, I, I made a lot. <laughs> I, 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 I made yes. a lot. Oh of no, mistakes. exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's um yeah. I, I yeah, I spent huge amounts of money on import CDs for bands that I'd read. Oh well they sound a bit like the guys they fucking don't know, do they? Oh, there was a gas off a CD, which I bought <laughs> off the back. <laughs> one of the one of the punkaramas had a really good cover. Had a great cover. They were all dressed as secret agents. I was like, that has got to be, that has got to be off the hook. That album. And I yeah, I must have paid like eighteen quid for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It waited a long time, and it was there's one good track on it. There's a few yeah, and there's a few that kind of there's a few misses, but then there's also the hits that you get where it's like. I've fucking discovered this. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I, I think I'd read a review of the first Catch Twenty Two album. Oh yeah, please be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On it was, it was an in, earthquake. It, that album. It was it, in something. It was like in a fanzine that I picked up from some someone or some record shop. As I was like, eh, I give it a go. But I think I ended up paying huge amounts of money for an import, waiting weeks, and then getting it and going, "Oh, that is as good as I imagined yeah. it might have been." <laughs> It's like, oh, no, it's actually better. It's fucking incredible. Absolute game changer, that. Yeah, but you you wouldn't feel that same kind of sense of joy and ownership over something if Spotify had just gone, listen to this. (laughs) How's that? Is that right? Like that? Uh, How about Good Charlotte? I know you like like punk. (laughs) It's like, it's like, it's like sending your gran out to buy you records. Yeah. Get it's, down Woolies. Yeah. Get down Woolies. See what, you, see what you come back with. Oh, well, I spoke to the man in the shop and he said, <laughs> oh, no, if you like punk, you like this, he said. He said, oh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. He said, it's very punky and I've got you this. Do you, how's that for you? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, gran, it's shit. It's like, and then you, you're having to argue with your gran. You don't want to um, do that. No one wants to argue with a no, grand no one with Charlotte, with do they? No it's, one wants that. Um, but yeah, I mean, and that's Fright Night for you. That's Fright Night for you. <laughs> what was your favourite sampler? What was your favourite punk rock sampler from back in the day? It, it was the first... Uh, I went to Reading 97. I was there. With my brother. Yeah. And that was my first... It was my first festival I'd ever been to. Uh, drove down in my... Brother's camper van, and um, 
I think I sort of like said goodbye to him on perhaps like the first day <laughs> and only returned to the van to eat beans and didn't really see him for the rest of the, the festival apart from the meet up to watch Metallica on the third night um, but yeah I just went feral for like three days in the field but it was the first year that the Warped Tour had come yeah, over it was great it was the Pennywise year wasn't it Pennywise were playing at the same time as Suede uh, it was supposed to be Limp Biscuit headlining yeah. and yeah. they pulled out uh, but they were giving away the f- it was Punkarama 2 but it was Punkarama 2.1 yeah it was the special Warp Tour edition yeah. wasn't it yeah um, and that was kind of like because I'd been into sort of like stuff before I think Green Day Offspring all that usual sort of uh, MTV2 stuff around that time but then getting that it's like I'm propaganda <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's all this about then? Um, and obviously at the time you're just thinking these guys like to party fucking hard <laughs> so I'm all about that now yeah, yeah. it's only later you kind of realise it's like no actually meat isn't great is it <laughs> it's like it, it's kind of, yeah but yeah that first, the, the Punkarama volume 2.1 was the first one that I got and it was like it's, it's like eh? Yeah. Keys to the Kingdom. Yeah, no, same You've with me. You've got it for um, Spine of the Fattest. The second, is that around the same time? Yeah, it was the second fat record one. Um, I, I, Yeah, I, I strongly suspect I bought that very soon after coming back from that festival. Yeah. Uh, from X Records in Bolton, I would have thought. Uh, and it, yeah, it was, th- that was the point where it's like, oh, all right, well. Yeah, no, everything makes everything makes a bit more sense now. Yeah, um, yeah it, it was. Yeah, I think it's just kind of. Yeah, I, I, it, but then you speak to people around a similar age to ourselves, and it's like pretty much everyone that I know had exactly the same. So it's like, uh, like, like you just want to kind of sidle up to someone in a bar and go, "Punk around with volume two. <laughs> I think I'm fucked. You just get a hug. It's like a bandana out your back pocket, isn't it? <laughs> you just, you just get a, you just get a knowing nod, yeah. and then a. Ah. Yes, my I've, people. I found, I found them. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that kind of, yeah, and like you say, that kind of, that tribalism perhaps has disappeared from music and popular culture in general. I think it's kind of, it's not not really there anymore and it's kind of whether it's better or worse I, yeah, I, it's difficult to say yeah it's good there's good and bad about it you yeah know, it, it, it's really cool that kids are into loads of different things yeah um but it, it's kind of that sense of belonging maybe yeah, it's I, fallen by the wayside a little bit God, but, we're sounding but, so be, old. but because you don't have that tribalism you, you don't have those cliques i don't know if that sense of not belonging or belonging is as integral to someone's growing up anymore if you know yeah, what I mean yeah it's like speaking to like I mean Amos is only five now what's his favourite punk sampler uh, we, well we have listened to punk around volume 2 quite a bit actually <laughs> we tend to do it if we're doing crafts um, but it, like he thing, things aren't things aren't binary there aren't those kind of yeah. because there aren't those cliques and like at the age of five he's able to wrap his head around that idea of like oh maybe they're not a he or she maybe they're a they it's like that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. maybe that's not a hurdle in this next generation to come yeah. that is going to be there that is going to alienate people yeah. so maybe they won't need a punkarama compilation to make them feel complete <laughs> we've we've managed to move, we're, we're post punkarama we are well that's it we've we've dismantled the need for punk um, <laughs> let's move on let's move on <laughs> I don't think this is probably quite a good time to move on from Friday night where we've, we've digressed massively, yeah. but, but, but worthily as well. Yeah. That's right, Precious Format. You don't listen to that nasty Drew Millward. You're still a very valid way of making YouTube videos, no matter what they say. Yeah, you don't have to worry about him anymore. Until 
probably next week when I'll be back with the second part, maybe the final part. I don't know. It might be three parts. We haven't yet decided, but it's very exciting, isn't it? So do return so you can watch us shout at clouds a little bit more and descend into a very light form of drunkenness, maybe talking about posters, probably getting rather distracted on the way. What fun, everyone. Oh, I haven't even had a chance to plug anything yet. So um, in the meantime, go to loudribs.com and buy a print or something, because otherwise I'll starve to death. Anyway, see you next week.